Now, we would like to invite Mr. Mehdi Amiri, Kurdistani, to talk about a survey on embedded open source system software for Internet of Things. So hello everybody and thank you that you are listening to us. Uh, I'm Mahdi Amiri uh, from Sultan Abbas University CRC Research Center, and I uh, I'm again thank you for uh, being part of this conference as our research center. My talk is uh, going to be a very short talk about uh, a survey which is a part of our research at the center. Uh, the research is covering all the topics of IoT, and my talk and another paid uh, talk, which is going to be next, is uh, focused on two topics. One is, which is this one, is the system software, and we also have another talk about uh, connectivities and cloud uh, systems. So regarding the system software, uh, this is the agenda that I'm going to quickly cover. What is the system software? And why it is different for IoT systems? How to choose the right uh, system software and the state of art projects? I'm going to quickly cover a number of differences in ARM architecture profiles and connectivity standards. Then I'm going to quickly compare a number of open source projects regarding this topic. And I'm going to finish my talk. So uh, system software, also known as operating system in uh, general computers, is called uh, board support package on embedded systems, sometimes RTOS on real-time systems, and sometimes firmware on microcontrollers. They are all common terms for system software. So what is so different for IoT? Because if system software is same as operating system, we already know what is operating system, and we are already using it. The main difference for IoT systems is uh, we have a variety of hardware architecture like ARM, MIPS, Intel, and uh, so on. We have many, many different interfaces to sensors, cameras, actuators, and others. We have many connectivity standards on IoT, such as Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, ZigBee, and others. We have uh, new transmission techniques like slow pans, RPL, co-app, and others. We have new security challenges, like authentications and over-the-air updates. And uh, also, we have concentrated performance and power. Many IoT devices should work on batteries for years. And uh, they have very limited user interfaces. You usually do not see any you know, graphical interfaces on many embedded systems. Maybe a few push buttons, and that's it. So generally, the system software or IoT is so different from the normal computers or operating systems. A number of state-of-art projects regarding system software is uh, the projects from Linux Foundation. If you follow this uh, organization, you will see uh, they have a lot of collaborative projects, uh, like IoTVT, Tizen, Automatic Grade Linux, Yocto, and Zypher. Each project has its own customers and its own boards. For instance, uh, Zypher is for microcontrollers, while automatic great Linux is for vehicles. Uh, what are these uh, softwares? Actually, we can define IoT ecosystem, a solution from immediate devices or things to the internet, or mostly known as cloud, that can be extended to big data, smart control, and artificial intelligence. So it's a big topic. And we are focused on the first part, and these are a number of example projects from Linux. Also, we have Google ecosystem, like Google VM, um, Android things. We have ARM embedded ecosystem, like Embed OS and Embed Cloud. And we have a lot of uh, community and academic projects, like Contiki, RIOT, Apache, Muti, and others. And good news, most of them are open source. So how to choose the right one for our projects? Well, uh, we can say a few factors like hardware architecture are very important because you should choose the hardware by uh, specifying your application. 
For instance, ARM has three domain architectures, like ARM v7M, ARM real-time as ARM vr, and application profiles. Regarding connectivity standards, you can divide it in short and long range. We can divide it to topologies like star and mesh. We can uh, talk about the, how the device is going to be connected to the internet. Is it going to be a direct connection or indirect? And the throughput of the device is going to be a low throughput or a massive you know, amount of throughput is going to be there. And external interfaces to devices as MM sensors. We can talk about transmission techniques, what is going to be our target transmission techniques on embedded device. Uh, we have to focus on the securities and the type of the license that we are going to target for system architecture. To sum up regarding the uh, ARM architecture, these are a number of common architectures. If you look at the last column, uh, you will see that uh, application can start from high-end applications on ARM V8A to very low powerful controllers on ARM M0 and M1 and M0 plus. So it's a very wide range. Regarding the connectivity standards, we can talk about Wi-Fi BGN, which are uh, having a short range, but a very good data rate, to, uh, for instance, and plus or Bluetooth are, which are designed for very short range, and the cellular or sub gigahertz, which are designed for very long distances. To sum up, uh, I can uh, compare the number of uh, current system software, open source system softwares and ecosystems to Android things, Embed OS, Contiki OS, RIOT, Zypher, and Apache Minuti which I have uh, present all of them in detail in the paper. If you like, you can uh, check it, uh, the details on the paper. But to sum up, uh, they have uh, their providers is Google, ARM, uh, Thing Square, Linux Foundation, and Apache. And uh, they have integrated licenses. They can support a number of architectures. And uh, a number of them have uh, already made cloud uh, solution. Uh, to sum up, I can say if we want to have the best software for our next IoT device, we should first check the hardware, what is the uh, application for us. We should check the connectivity standards, what is the target for the device. We should check the software license. Are we allowed to do commercial uh, products on the software or not? We should check the security features, external interfaces such as sensors cloud integrations, and at the end, we should check the support and community behind the system software. Thank you very much for your time.